Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Horizon Reports. My name is Kasi Mustafa. Foreign pilgrims across the world will be arriving in Saudi Arabia for the first time in two years since the outbreak of COVID-19 that disrupted the world's biggest gathering. Kenyan Muslims will be part of the one million pilgrims both in and out of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to do this year's Hajj, which is due in July 2022. The Supreme Council of Kenya Muslims uh, was given an opportunity by the government of the Republic of Kenya in 1986, actually as with a mandate of coordinating the Hajj activities in the country. This happened after the realization that when Kenyans go to Hajj those days, there was actually nobody responsible for Kenyans. So everyone else was going on his own. Those who successfully uh, performed their Hajj and returned back, they come back to the country. Those uh, unsuccessful, they may not return and nobody cares about them. Those who fall sick, uh, nobody takes care of them. So um, the embassy of the Republic of Kenya in Saudi Arabia got in a lot of problems on how to ensure that Kenyans are safe in, 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 out, out, out of the country. I did my first Hajj in 1990 while I was a student. I, I studied at uh, the Islamic University of Medina. Uh, while I was there, I saw, uh, now it's almost 32 years. Yeah. So over the years, uh, I've seen the different faces which uh, have really, really improved. Uh, for example, uh, 30 years ago, somebody will come, okay, we go with Hujaj from Kenya uh, to Mecca while he doesn't know which resident is going to, uh, uh, to be in. So what they will do is, uh, they will uh, be in Jeddah airport. The agent will leave or uh, the partner will, will stay with the hujaj in, in the airport. The agent will rush to Makkah, look for a hotel. When, when uh, they, uh, they identify the hotel and then he will come to airport and pick the hujaj. Others will be, they will even take a bus go to Makkah, leave the hujaj uh, in the scorching heat of Makkah during summer, look for a residence. When they identify and get, then they, 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 they will uh, uh, bring down the, the hujaj. So uh, over the years, Alhamdulillah, I've seen how uh, some of the hujaj would suffer unnecessarily. And, and Alhamdulillah, it was my passion that uh, when I finished schooling, I will start my own uh, agency and try to, uh, uh, to solve some of uh, the issues which at that time I saw they were unnecessary. Before given a visa now, you, you, they will know that which hotel you are going to stay in Mecca, in Medina. You've already paid for your transport, you've already paid for all these things. So prior to uh, even given a visa for now, but 30 years ago it was not, they, it was a total uh, different uh, ball game altogether. Those years also, the Saudi government uh, decided to ensure that the Hajj is coordinated because they realized, uh, like Kenya and other many uh, African countries uh, specifically, after Hajj, they, they, they established that there are so many people loitering in the streets of Saudi Arabia. Uh, people who go there, not because necessary to perform Hajj, but after performing Hajj, they look for livelihood, they even start begging in the streets. And so now it was very difficult to round up these people and take them back to their countries. So the Saudi government came up with an, an idea that it is important to have Hajj organized along the missions. In Muslim minority countries like Kenya and other African countries and also Western countries, including the U.S., uh, Hajj is coordinated through the umbrella organizations in those countries. For Muslim majority countries, Alhamdulillah, they are lucky. They have Mus their ministries, uh, ministries of our CAF, ministries of uh, religious affairs that uh, handle the issues of Hajj. So in our in our case here, uh, Soup Camp doubles up as both as, as umbrella body of Muslims and also as the as the Kenya Hajj mission. But in the mission, uh, we together work with the agents. To be a Hajj agent, it involves a number of things. Um, amongst them, to know uh, the rulings, the guidelines uh, of performance of, uh, of Hajj and Umrah. Uh, of course, there are different types of agencies or travel agents. Um, if somebody wants to go to 
let's say Dubai, China or so uh, for business and so on so forth. Yeah? Uh, people travel uh, to go and see and visit their, their loved ones, uh, whether relatives or friends and so on and so forth. But uh, this type of, uh, uh, of a trip, uh, it's, a, it's a trip which involves Ibadah. Uh, therefore, uh, one of the conditions will be uh, the guide to know all the rules and regulations pertaining to Hajj and Umrah. The usual days of Hajj, um, you will get between three to five million people uh, 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 at a time. Um, I think it is the biggest gathering in the world. Um, not even Olympics, not even World Cup. Uh, 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 that kind of population they converge in in one place. Uh, so. Uh, it involves a lot of a lot of um, uh, issues, eh? both administrative issues, logistical issues, uh, accommodation, meals, and all that. Note that uh, every country in the world has a, what is called a quota, uh, the number of fujaj they are expected from every country. Kenya, we have always have a quota of 6,000 people uh, every year. Unfortunately, we have never even been able to send the 6,000 the 6, people. We normally send between 4,000 to 5,500, something like that. But this year, because of corona, and you old Kenyans, you should actually, we all remember that we have not had Hajj for two consecutive years. This year, because of the corona impact, uh, so the kingdom, uh, the royal kingdom of Saudi Arabia, have decided to reduce the number of Hajj from four, 4 million to 1 million. So this 1 million was divided, distributed all over the world, the same way they normally do, but now, uh, I think there are a number, thing, a number of things they were considering which we may not know because we don't understand what, ra what was the rationale of giving this country this and giving that country that. It is important to note there are countries in the world who have actually received less than 50 people as the quota. Uh, we are very lucky as a country that we have gotten 4,587 uh, as our quota this year. You have to do a number of, uh, of arrangements. Uh, so you have to sign uh, contracts uh, with the hotels in Mecca and hotels in Medina. You have to pay down payment and all that. Uh, you have to do the ticketing. Um, which which dates are you uh, traveling uh, from here to Jidda and then transportation from Jidda to Mecca and then transportation from Mecca to, uh, to, to Mina and then Mina, Muzdalifa, Arafa and then back to Mecca and then after Hajj, Makkah to Medina, and then um, uh, Medina, uh, and then Ziara in Medina, uh, and then uh, transport from the hotel to the airport, and then ticket again back to, uh, from Medina to, to, uh, to Kenya, and so on and so forth. So it involves a lot of uh, logistical administrative issues. So uh, when we receive this quota uh, that we have been given this uh, number, then we are embarked on the process of recruiting agents. Uh, this year, uh, we tried our level best to, to actually uh, abide by the Kenyan constitution, uh, the most publicized uh, chapter six of the constitution, at least the basics to ensure that the people who have been given opportunity to, to handle who judge are uh, people who, are at least in the, in, the, in the eyes of a common man, are people who are upright, people who may not mess up with their resources. Uh, so we demanded uh, registered companies, we demanded that there are companies with offices, physical offices, we demanded that there are people, known registered uh, individuals who are actually have their national identity cards or they have their passports. We also demanded that we, we have to, ha to see their bank accounts so that they are actually established institutions, we wanted certificates, we also wanted the PIN numbers, you know, the normal things uh, you know, that we need to have for an institution to operate. Alhamdulillah, we have been, uh, we did that work for, for, because this is a rush, a crash program. So every agent, Kenyan agent today who is performing, who will be carrying a uh, hujaj, knows how many people they are going to go with because we have done that. There are different packages. That's why you see one agent, uh, uh, charging a certain amount and another uh, agent uh, charging another amount and so on and so forth. Of course, it's an open market, so uh, you, you, you charge according to, uh, uh, of course, the costing and other, other issues. For example, 
uh, if Jamia Mosque is, um, uh, for those who are from Nairobi, if Jamia Mosque is, uh, is haram, the, uh, the, the uh, masjid of uh, Mecca, Masjid al al Haram, eh? so uh, the hotels in the vicinity of Jamia will be more expensive, of course. And also the level of the hotel, all right? For example, uh, uh, you are in, in the vicinity of, of, of Jamia, of CBD, uh, but then Hilton Hotel will be more expensive. Then you have 680 Hotel. Then you have also uh, lodges or hotels in, in River Road. So it depends on what level of the hotel which you want. So there are five star hotel, four star, three star, uh, two star, one star, and unrated hotels. There are also uh, uh, residents which have been refurbished. Uh, they're not hotels and they're not residents, so they're hybrid. Uh, they, they, they call them Hajj residents, okay? Uh, so those are some of the issues uh, involved. If um, uh, Jamia, as, a, as an example, is haram, if you take a hotel in Isli, it will be cheaper than taking in CBD. So those are some of the issues. The other issues are whether it, the package involves meals or not. So there'll be like uh, only breakfast or half board, breakfast and lunch or breakfast and dinner, or full board, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Th those are all, all, all uh, issues. Huh? Uh, if you have private uh, transport or uh, public transport, those are also uh, issues. Uh, if it involves uh, or includes Uthia or not, Uthia is the slaughtering uh, or not. So. Uh, before any person goes um, uh, uh, with a, a certain agent, it's very important to ask all these questions. For example, what is the distance from Haram? Of course, for those who are going to take hotels, they're going to be more expensive than the ones who are taking Haji residence. And then uh, uh, the, the grade of the hotel, and then the distance of the hotel from Haram. So those are also uh, all issues, yeah? Uh, the other issue is, uh, Amina, what kind of package do we have? Usually, we used to have A, B, C, and then they scrap D. But this year, uh, they have A and D. They, they don't have uh, B, C. The other advantage is that because this, specifically this year, they're only allowing one million who judge. So what they've done is they've expanded uh, the, the, uh, the tents in, in terms of number of persons per, per tent, okay? Uh, you, we used to have a tent of like 18 people, but now uh, what I had, or even 24 people, uh, but what I had is that um, uh, uh, the new arrangement is that um, they, they're going to have um, uh, 10 people per tent. So it, it's going to, since it's only 1 million instead of 3.5 or 4, 4 million, uh, the space is, is wide enough. Yeah? Among the agents, there are two categories of agents. There are travel agents who are registered with the IATA and uh, you know, those we call them companies. They operate, they operate with their systems completely. They, we don't, the only thing we do, we, we give them the quota and then we help them to open the system. Because it is good to understand that the, how we operate is that we, Saudi Arabia gives us the system. For example, I can just get into the system now and process the visa uh, from my laptop here. So uh, what they do is that the, the moment they give you the, the, the password uh, to get into the system, so you, then you, you are able to operate as long as you are able to pay. So if we sign a contract with an hotel in Saudi Arabia, an approved hotel in Saudi Arabia, that, that contract is actually put in the system. So uh, the, the, the prices of the tents in Minna, and the other, they are also there. Everything else, including transport, are in the system. So if you get into the system and you tick all those things that you, you have, and the money is in the system, then the, you will be able to be issued with a visa. So you cannot, you cannot get your visa. And you can, you can, we just bring the visa here. So it's not that but we don't even go to the ministry. As long as the money is there, and then you meet all the, the conditions that are required, then we are able to produce the, the visa to you, for you here. We don't, go to the, the, we, we don't go to the embassy, we don't go to anywhere. So um, the, the other group now, the companies, the companies operate their systems privately, but it is us who open for them. 
So when we open, we allow them, we authorize them to get into the system, they can also start generating the, the visas on their side. It's only foreigners, uh, the people who are in Kenya legally, whose passports are taken to the, to the embassy here. So we do everything here, but the passports are taken to the embassy for, for official, for stamping of the, uh, for fixing of the, of the visa and other things, but for any other person, whatever. The most important thing uh, in, the, in all this conversation, or in the preparation of Hajj, is honesty. Because it is, it is important for us, the agents, and the agents to know that as much as we are in charge of this process, but this is a purely religious process, which we should not be looking at money alone. Because to us, Alhamdulillah, as the as Subkem, we are offering this as a service. We have 2,987 uh, visas here. It is in this, in this new laptop now. But I can't get even one without paying all the services. You can't get. So which means for us even to process one, uh, agents must have deposited the money to allow for the visas to be, to be processed. People talk about uh, sometimes uh, corruption on issues of money about hajj, misappropriation, whatever. But what is interesting is that um, we have never seen one Kenyan who have not gone to hajj, despite of the amounts of money that uh, sometimes the council is accused of misappropriating. Interestingly, it is good to know that there is nowhere Sufkem will handle any money of the, of the of judge. We don't meet with the money. Because the moment you deposit the money to the account, the money is remitted directly through the system to their bank account, to the, our bank account in the Ministry of Hajj. So what that money is there, it is now, it, that money will be there. So when, when we key in one visa, for example, it deducts money for the hotel, depending on which hotel, because when you, you mention the company you are going with, let us say you are going with Sherika A as a, as, a, as a member or as an agent under the mission. You are going with this uh, group. So that group is, is in our system. So when I click that group, it shows this particular group, which hotel did they, did they book in Mecca, which hotel did they book in Medina. Okay, so those now, that's where the, the, the prices differ from one agent to another one. The other, the, the, the cost for tents are the same, the cost for transport are the same, so there is no, there is no difference. It's only in accommodation where there is a little bit of difference, because some people are actually taking five-star hotels. It is, so those are different. So when you key in into that, your money is automatically deducted from the system. So it is, there is no possibility that you will be able to go to Mecca and then there is still money remaining in Sufgham or in any other place. There is, there'll be no money because the money is what gives you the, passport, the, the visa. Without money, there is no visa. Even if I want to key now, I have, we have 2,987 uh, visas here. It is in this, in this needed laptop now. But I can't get even one without paying all the services. You can't get. So which means for us even to process one, uh, agents must have deposited the money to allow for the visas to be, to be processed.